Hello everybody. So today I have another mini cases video, but this is the first one where we are only doing two people. And that's because one of them is fairly longer than the other. Um, but I know it wouldn't be quite long enough for a full video on its own. I feel like I say that all the time. And then the other one is not at all long enough for a video on its own. Um, but I felt like if I did three, it would be way too long. Um, or longer than I like these videos to typically be. I like doing mini videos because they're typically on the shorter side. They're quick. They're easy. I can get a lot of names out there. And I feel like with three, it would just be a little too conv convoluted. I don't know how to say the word. I'm sorry. So today, we are only talking about two people. We are talking about Lisa Brazino and Aretha Ayers. So all the links I use for research will be down below, like always. And let's get into this. We're going to start with Aretha Ayers. So, Aretha Lee Ayers was born on August 12th, 1939, and she was 43 at the time she vanished. She was last seen the morning of December 19th, 1982, driving away from her residence at the Breakers Apartments in Largo, Florida. She was on her way to buy laundry detergent. She left home without taking any clothing and personal belongings. A few days later, her husband got a letter from her saying she left him to be with Cleveland Hills Jr., and she wanted her children to stay with him, stay with their father. Um, she was never seen or heard from again. Her white two-door 1976 Ford Elite was found in March 1983, four months after she vanished. Months before she vanished, her then-boyfriend uh, found out about her affair with Cleveland Hill, a married asphalt contractor and friend of the family. And I just want to say very quickly, I just said boyfriend. Um, I was also confused. So, I don't know if they just got mixed up and she wasn't married and her husband is technically the boyfriend or if she has a husband, she had a boyfriend on the side, a different boyfriend, and then she was having an affair with another boyfriend. I'm not sure how that worked out. I could not find anything. So I don't know if there was a husband and two other men, or if it was the husband and he just had like two different titles that they were giving him. I could not be sure, but I wanted to let you know that I was also confused, and yes, you heard me right. <laughs> so that's all I can say about that. So Ritha attempted suicide after the boyfriend found out. She survived, and the boyfriend agreed to marry her. <clears throat> And she claimed she ended her relationship with Cleveland Hill Jr. <clears throat> now, I was still confused when reading this because I know said like she got married, and you'd, you'd probably thinking, so it's it is the husband. Um, I don't know because I don't know how long they were married. I don't know if she was. I I just don't know how it was working out. Um, she just had a, a couple different relationships, so let's just leave it at that. The husband, who got the letter and this Cleveland Hills Jr. guy are the two people that we need to focus on. But yes, I was also confused and I wasn't sure how to put that out there. So we left off with her claiming that she ended her relationship with Cleveland Hills Jr. Her husband approached Cleveland after Retha vanished and asked where she was and he said that Retha left to be with a white man and he had no idea where she was. Her husband, uh, sought and was granted a divorce on grounds of adultery. So, Danielle Johnson and Margaret Dash also disappeared while dating Cleveland and have never been found. Cleveland served a prison sentence for two accounts of assault after he shot his wife and mom, mother-in-law in 1969, or 1968. In 1992, he was convicted of drug trafficking. He was released in 2008 and he now lives in Virginia. He still says he's innocent, and he has never been charged with any of the three disappearances. And I just want to say really quickly, I'm not sure um, how his wife and mother-in-law are doing now. I believe that they did, in fact, live because it was just two counts of assault. Um, but I don't know anything else about those relationships there. I don't know if he was still with his wife uh, when he was uh, having his affair with Retha. I am not sure. So my thoughts on this is I definitely think that Cleveland Hill Jr. had something to do with this. Um, for one, he is the side piece. He 
is technically, I guess in a way, the last person who could have seen her, according to her letter that she supposedly sent. Um, two other women have vanished while being with him, and I'm just saying that does not mean he's guilty. Maybe it's a coincidence. I just think it's weird that he is with he he has been with three different women, and they have all basically vanished. I think that is super super weird, and I can't believe that he just has not been arrested for anything. Maybe there just really is that lack of evidence, but I just think he's really sketchy. I definitely think he has something to do with it. Um, with that being said, we do have a phone number if you have any information regarding this case. You are urged to contact the Pinellas County Sheriff Sheriff's Office at 727-582-6200. Again, the phone number for the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office is 727-582-6200. I will have a photo of Ritha on the screen right now, and if I have any other photos regarding her case, I will have also put them up by now. Moving on to the second person I'm wanting to talk about, Lisa Brazino. Now, I'm not sure if I am pronouncing her last name correctly, but I do think it's Brazino or Brazino. I'm not quite sure. But Lisa Pearl Brazino was last seen in Portland, Oregon on August 27th, 1997. She left with her boyfriend in a white 1983 BMW with an Oregon license plate. And that license plate is U, like the letter U, 2L dash six two five and the vehicle was later recovered if she has never been seen or heard from again the description of lisa is that at the time she was 28 years old she stood at about five five feet she was 110 to 130 pounds and she was wearing a cream colored blouse and blue flowered pants she had black hair brown eyes and she was a member of the confederated tribes of the warm springs reservation of oregon if you have any information regarding Lisa's case, you are urged to contact the Portland Police Bureau. Bureau, Bureau, I am so sorry, I cannot <laughs> say that correctly. And the phone number for them is 503-823-0446. Again, the phone number for the Portland Police Bureau, you know what I'm saying, is 503-823-0446. I will have her photo on the screen right now. I forgot to mention, um, she left with her boyfriend in the vehicle, um, and the vehicle was later recovered. I don't know if the boyfriend also went missing. I don't know if they ever found him. Um, I just know that the car was found, so I don't know if they're both missing, if maybe he's a suspect, I am not sure. This was literally all I could find, so I just want to put that out there. I could also not find his name. Um, but with that being said, that is everybody I have to talk about this video today. Um, let me know your thoughts down below about Retha and Lisa. What do you think happened to them? Please be respectful down below, like I always ask. You never know who's going to come across this video, and yeah. Thank you so much for listening to Retha and Lisa's stories, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye, guys.